This is part two of our video transports you places series. So today we're talking about the editing process, sound design and all the production choices we made whilst creating our trailer. If you missed part one it's probably because you're not subscribed yet so hit the subscribe button the bell notification and we'll link part one up in the top corner for you to watch after this video is finished. But for now I'll do a quick 10 second recap of what happened in part one. Right, so there are three different layers of sounds going off in this piece. You've got the music at the bottom, you've got the sound effects which reinforce the location, you know, things like the, the sound of the forest, the birds, the wind. It makes you believe that you're in that location. And then the last layer right on top is the voiceover talking about transporting you to somewhere new. So I'm going to play the full piece and you can see how I've arranged things on the screen and then we'll jump into each layer one by one. So here we go. Videos taking places. They can transport you anywhere instantly. Help people see what you see. Transport them there with the video without even having to leave their seat. Right, so I'm going to mute the sound effects, the voiceover, and bring up just the music. I have deleted the effects I put on it previously, and we're going to walk through what is happening here. So before we edit the music, where do we get it from? Well, for the past three years, we've been using Soundstripe. Uh, they've got a great collection of tracks. It's quite reasonably priced. I would recommend you check it out if you haven't already got somewhere to license your music from. I'll put a link in the description below. But when you get on their website, you can go in and filter what tracks via instrument, via genre, by the feeling, by the tempo. There are so many ways you can filter it right down to find the perfect track for the piece that you are currently editing. So you can see on screen, there are three separate clips of audio. It's actually one song, it's just personal choice. I liked one part of the song for the beginning and a different part of the song when it kicks in. Uh, this part here is just a swell from later on. Obviously, because it's from the same song, it's in the same key, I can drag it along and put it anywhere I want. And I use this swell as a transition from the office to the forest, as you can see. Just drops you into that new scene. Now what was going off is when we go from the office to the forest I want the music to sink into the background. It's as if the, uh, the me and Jake on screen were still in the office but it sunk into the back and it kind of accentuates the fact that we're now seeing the forest and not paying attention to what's happening around us because we're sucked into this video. So the way to achieve this, nice and easy. Now if you've played with EQ before, this is quite a simple trick. If you haven't, I'm going to walk through it, so don't worry. Now this is your full EQ. I've just dropped it onto this part here. And what I'm going to do is bring in this low cut and high cut to get rid of some of the information. So nice and easy. Low cut frequency. I'm going to bring that up to around about, let's go 800 and then punch that in for the automation. And then the high cut frequency, I'm going to bring that down to 1700. Punch that in for the uh, automation there. It leaves us with a very narrow band. Now this is going to take away a lot of the information and sync that track into the background. So now he's on the automation, let's see what it's actually doing. I'll bring up the graph again. There we go. Now to further accent this, I want to add a reverb. So I've put a reverb on. Let's put that all the way up to full. Hit the automation move the frame back and turn it off. And this is going to be our finished uh, mixing effects that we're going to do on the music. Pretty simple, it's all it needs. Let's take a listen. If we toggle it off. And you can see how that simple EQ curve and a bit of reverb sinks the music right into the background and it makes a lot of room for all the sound effects that we're about to introduce. So sound effects. 
if we're in a forest, think about what we're going to hear. We're going to hear wind. We're going to hear trees moving. We're going to hear birds. So we want to put that into this piece to make it as realistic as possible, to bring the viewer in, to draw them into what's happening on the screen and then transport them to somewhere new. And sound is such a huge part of that. So you can see on the screen, these tracks here, they are the same names as some of the clips. So basically some of the ambient sound that we had uh, picked up on the camera was really nice. I thought I'd just leave that in there. It's from the scene, it's natural, it does the job, so why make it complicated? There you go. Now you can just about, in the background you could hear a bird. Now I wanted to add more of that to make the forest feel more alive. So I have this forest sample here and this bird ambience. And you can see there's a bit of automation. So as we move from one clip to the next, it becomes more intense because we've moved into the clip into the scene and then as we get out of our seat it's going to get more animated so we want more sounds coming out of that as well to accent the animation that change and they've automated that up here as well so let's have a listen There we go. And then the rest of this, so windy desert. I know I'm not in a desert, but this is the best wind sample that I had in my library. Put that in, it accents that. And I also use this automation to change the wind into a bit of a swell as we drop out of the, t the next part of the scene where we get out of our seats and start to explore. There we go. It's a bit more subtle than the uh, this one here using the music but it does the job, uses sound effect, uses the natural sounds to signify, right, something's happening. We're getting out of our seat. We're moving on to the next part of this piece. And then the last few bits here, there's a reverb hit. Now this I've used at the end and at the beginning. I'll play you it here. It's a bit more pronounced. And it, this is a very sort of in-your-face way of saying next scene, next scene, next scene. Here we are. There we go. Nice and simple. It's just from a sample pack. I believe it's a tambourine hit. Loads of reverb on it. Sinks it into the background, but it does the job. Now, if we add all of those in and take a listen with the music, we should start to hear the piece come together. So I'll start from here. Now when you think about it, sound is half a video. When you watch a video, you're engaging two senses, your sight and your hearing. And if you're not backing up what's happening on screen with the sound, you're, you're missing a trick. The quickest way to jump your production to the next level is to add in sound effects, reinforce what's happening on that screen. If there's a train going past, add a train noise. If you're in a city, add some street noise. And it'll just draw the viewer in so much more. So. The last layer on this is the voiceover. Now there's not really that much to talk about on here. I just use this Rode NTG1 that I'm speaking through to you now. I got nice and close to the microphone because there's something called the proximity effect. Basically the proximity effect is the closer you are to the microphone and the capsule in there, the more bass, the more bottom end you're going to start to catch it on that microphone. And if you think about Hollywood movies, you know, big budget stuff, the voiceovers have always got that nice depth and crispiness to them and that adds to the production value if you hear that kind of voiceover you automatically think you know these guys are doing this properly so as you can see on screen there is this voiceover i've done a compound clip there's a few different parts in there now nice and easy there's a de-esser on there to get rid of some of the you know the sibilance you don't want that in there it's distracting there's an eq i got rid of a little bit of the bottom end so it's not muddy uh, about 300 hertz is also quite muddy on the, the recording I had and then this almost 4000 hertz and this little high shelf they just add that bit of sibilance that bit of crispiness back in to help it punch through the mix help it punch through all the other audio information that's happening in this track and the last thing is compression so this have a look videos take you places they can transport you anywhere instantly 
Now, you can see in the audio that there are peaks and troughs. Now, EQ literally gets the quiet bits and the loud bits and makes them a little bit closer together so you have a more consistent volume on your audio recording. So that's all that is doing, it's just leveling it out, keeping it nice and controlled. And then you, you drop that into the, uh, into the scene. Videos, cakey places, they can transport you anywhere instantly. Help people see what you see. Transport them there with the video without even having to leave their seat. There you go, that's it. I mean, it's only, uh, it's not even 40 seconds, that piece, but there's quite a lot going off on the audio. So next time you're trying to make a little advert for social media, you're making a vlog, whatever it is, just try playing around. There's obviously, there's the music, there's voiceovers, they're quite standard everyday things. Try putting some sound effects in there and see how it can elevate your production just to a whole different level and be more engaging for your viewers. Mm -hmm.